Hi, everyone, and welcome to Inside Futsal, Episode 6. And boy, we got a great show for you today with my good friend, the man, too sweet to be sour, 1989, leading goal scorer at the first ever FIFA Championships, one of the most traveled and experienced futsal coaches on the planet, ladies and gentlemen, Vic Hermans. Vic, my friend, how are things with you? Uh, the same I think as everybody over the world. First, I say hello to everybody. Uh, the COVID is over the whole world. Is, that's it. But personally, I'm very good. Uh, no problem. Follow the Euro on the moment. And uh, okay, I hope uh, on the short time to go back to my uh, my my job that I have uh, in Asia for the Philippines to uh, work there. This, but everything is great. I'm still uh, health and uh, okay. I cannot wait to uh, to go back. <laughs> hey, the weather over in the Philippines is a lot better. And and Vic, tell us, you know, for everyone uh, who doesn't know, I mean, you, you were obviously one of the top players uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s, became an assistant coach with the Dutch team, then became uh, head coach in a whole bunch of places across the world, including with uh, Thailand when they hosted the World Cup in 2012. Uh, you're with the Iranian team as well. I mean, you've been pretty much everywhere you know give us a, a little bit of background and history of all the places that you've coached yeah there's a, okay it starts a little like everyone you have when i grew up as football player and you grew up and then i came uh, in a television show in holland and i found out uh, the futsal game that was the two connections what i had uh, on that time that was possible f f uh, 40 years ago that was possible and what you said in 89, uh, we had before a lot of games with Holland uh, for the FIFA unofficial uh, tournaments in Hungary, in Spain and Brazil, 85, 86, 87. Then 89, we had the tournament. And then 89, I said to myself, OK, I think it was good. My age was also 37. And I see now players on the European Championships also in that age. This is a good age. And uh, FIFA came to me on that moment uh, uh, and asked me if I want to be the instructor for, f uh, it was five aside on that moment, uh, for them for to go to other countries. And the Dutch team asked me to assistant coach, what you said. But after six months, I found out also there, second of the world, losing from Brazil, uh, there was no potential, there was no opening for futsal on the moment. And uh, I go to back to uh, football. I was assistant coach in uh, Road AEC Karakrade because they're looking for a technique trainer. And uh, yeah, I was MVP for the World Championships. They came to me and I go to there for two, and a, for two years. And I must be honest, uh, we play European Championships. It's now Champions League against uh, Monaco and uh, Sofia. And uh, FIFA asked me then in 92 for Hong Kong. And uh, I go jump again from football to uh, five-a-side. And when I came back from Hong Kong, uh, yeah, there came another club from Belgium, first league uh, football. And I started there till 95. But on that moment, the Dutch uh, futsal team, I say now futsal, of course, that's now the international name, uh, the, the results going down. And in 97, they contact me again. Can you come to, uh, to the Dutch Federation for, for, to be the coach or be the assistant coach? No, they, they, uh, I had another job in Belgium. I had my own soccer school there. And uh, I was assistant coach because they make the choice for somebody who lives close to Utrecht. That was Nico Spry. And I was for three years assistant from him. And then in 2000, I came back full time by the Dutch Federation after we have a conversation, what we want to do with the futsal in uh, Holland. And uh, OK, I step in with my program. And uh, the program was uh, to eliminate football players. And I say you something what I think that is very crucial for the Dutch Federation and also the Belgian Federation. Uh, you cannot play amateur football and uh, futsal now. What happens? Uh, there's, I said, we're going to do, and I set my training session on Sunday. That means on Sunday, they blocked the players to play football. And OK, we did that. We trained. We were, and we qualified in the, the, for the European ch Championships in Czechia with our team. And that was one rule. When we, come, uh, when we win uh, from one of the three games, we got the Olympic status. That means that the players get every month 1,000 euros. 
every every month thousand euros and they must only go full time for futsal that was in 2004 okay we did that and now it's a strange in the situation was that in 2005 the clubs they don't want any more that the the players not can play football they start playing in the i did know that they play in some teams they play on saturday and okay and in 2009 it was three four years later i i had a, a conversation with the federation uh, i said no this is not what i want i had some bad experience with some people around me and i said to them or oh, i can start again or i quit that was uh, that was the big deal then we go to another hotel we make an again the 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 meeting and i say no this is what i want i want to go this way or we go, i quit now we came not out to the philosophy there were the, the the limit was there for futsal and i stopped i stopped but between i was for fifa go around the world i was now uh, i saw last time uh, in 52 countries uh, only to uh, promote futsal the last for me, it was in Botswana three years ago. But okay, I'm now older and you're feeling also that uh, there are some other people coming in. And that's normal. That's normal. This and 2000. Uh, and then after 2000, after the, the Holland Federation, I go to uh, Malta in uh, 2009 because uh, I was fine. And Malta, I saw them in Russia on the, on the tournament and the president asked me for a coach. The UEFA told them, Ask Vic Hermans, he has a good coach for you. And then I say to them, why you don't uh, talk to me? And uh, no, 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 you are too, too expensive for us. And uh, say, no, that's not the deal. You must first talk to me. And uh, I go to Malta and uh, yeah, I found out, hey, that was exactly what I want to build something for three years. And But then Thailand came in 2012. They need the coach for the world championships. And uh, I started in Asia again. Between, I was also in 93, starting in Iran. That was the first course for FIFA in Iran. And I have a lot of friends in Iran. In 2000, I did the AFC championships with them. I win all the games. We were winner from the tournament. Because I have still, that was the connection also with Asia. And then I started in Hong Kong and I saw many countries. And it was, but I had for many, I had very, nah, for traffic uh, years, training twice a day, five days in the week, uh, perfect. The team was so professional. And uh, after 2016, I must wait for one year because they want to change. And uh, there came another president. And when the other president come, they bring the own coach. And uh, also that I qualified for the world championships again in uh, uh, Colum uh, 2000, yeah, Colombia. Uh, but okay, they took another coach. And uh, I, I go to uh, I go to Indonesia then later on, and after Indonesia, yeah, okay, one year. Uh, still, what I said, I'm looking for people who wants to develop the game, and not only to people to uh, sit somebody on a chair and uh, give them nothing. And uh, that was my my experience in Iran, but now I'm in the Philippines, and uh, yeah, and between I was for FIFA around the world to to develop the games. That was uh, that was good. Just I like it, and uh, that was my big story. And I hope I hope still I hope still that there come more. But that must be with the Philippines. Well, you're still young at heart out there. I mean, I met you for the first time in 2012 at that World Cup in in Bangkok. And yeah. uh, well, it was in Thailand, but you know, two of the three venues were in Bangkok. I think the other yeah. was Nakhon Ratchasima. Uh, I only recall because it was Falcao versus uh, Fal uh, versus Ricardinho. And, uh, you know, as a young guy, uh, you can't miss that game if you have the opportunity, right? So you had to travel mm -hmm. in this 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 FIFA uh, media shuttle bus. Uh, but as you know, the roads outside of Bangkok, not the smoothest mm -hmm. for Terrible, dance. Huh? <laughs> oh, it was, yeah. uh, it was like Terrible. a roller coaster for four hours to get out there. But, you know, then I saw yeah. you again in Colombia. I had a nice dinner uh, with a whole bunch of guys. Keith Tozer was there. Uh, Otto, who's now yeah. the assistant coach uh, over at the – uh, United States national team, uh, quite a few guys. But, I mean, you got so much experience at the European and international level. Tell us, European championships happening right now. Were you able to catch the Russia, Croatia, and Poland, Slovakia games today? Yeah, the Russian, the Russian are dominated. And uh, I mean, honest, um, 
I said all those when I play with Holland against Russia or on a world championship so against that team from the East Block. They're looking always so so uh, yeah. We say always that they, they have some lines and that you can say what they want to do. But still, they are so cool, so ice. And but now this team is so powerful. Uh, and I saw yeah, you saw the the last World Championships, and you see now how they're playing. Wow! It, I think I think. Yeah, I cannot say before, but I'm thinking the last four is easily for them, easily. Yeah, uh, but also in that group today and today, I mean, also like Croatia is also surprising me. Uh, it's a good team from the Balkan, uh, of many years in, in the European Championships, stable, etc. But the, the two games, you saw the difference between the first and the second game. And you saw second game was more open. It was not so what I say always control it eh? when you see that game th today and i was watching uh, when they build up um when you see other teams like like example spain or portugal they're always coming back somebody when when they're turning when they're turning somebody go deep the other is back but today you saw many times that some player on the back only he was the last one for the people to see for me it was very nice it was a very nice game but it was more open but open is good for us, but for the tournament, for to come further in the tournament, now that's uh, that that needs a little more. That needs a little more. That's I think in this group it will be Russia and Croatia. What going through uh, when, uh, when you see the last game is Croatia, Slovakia, and Russia is Poland. Does I think Poland is out, but the winner from Croatia, Slovakia, I think that will be Croatia. Yeah, but, I happen to agree. Yeah, you see, you see also what I, what I, uh, yeah, when I was a couple of times at TSG for the FIFA, uh, I miss that uh, now because uh, hmm, the last World Championships uh, in Lithuania, you were there. We had only two people was in the, in the TSG. Normally we are with six people there, and now it was only Miguel and uh, Graham Dell. And I'm feeling it going the interest going down. It's going not up from there. It's going down, uh, and. Uh, but okay, when you see the the the, the uh, what has happened with free, yeah with futsal on the moment is the same as in football. The speed is number one. Before uh, twenty years ago, when you had uh, Fernando or you had uh, uh, let let me say now come back Manuel Torre, Tobias, uh, you have now that came uh, Falcao. Ricardinho was a little a little faster than Falcao. Falcao he needs for the technique was marvelous to see. But now in this time, it's the speed from the game is much is number one. When you have a team which is not fit enough, you're losing all the games. When you start from the beginning to press, you're losing. I, I changed also my mind. Before you're looking for technical players, uh, that's okay. But also that they, they need they need the the, the physical uh, spirit for the two times twenty minutes, two minutes into like ice hockey, and that is something what is changed in the, in the futsal. When you see till now the games, I saw in Kazakhstan, I saw a player is very quick on the first um, uh, meters, but I miss I miss now the types who's going only on one to go on. Most of the time they go inside shooting, inside shooting. And eh? Falcao, we know he go round. Ricardinho go round. I think in the future we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna miss that players, the the, the technical things. But okay, that's that's my personal opinion. About what I see now till now, I see a good a couple of good teams, but you saw Portugal in the World Championships, and you see Portugal now is a different, is different. Yeah, I mean you you have Ricardinho out. Bebe uh, unfortunately got injured in the last game, and uh, yeah. or actually in the first game, and now he's out. Yeah. And they brought back Edu. Um, but with this Russian team, I mean, let's go back to the World Cup when I saw them in the group stage. Each game, I was more astonished and said, "This team." If they get by Argentina, they quite possibly will go all the way. And, yeah. I mean, in this tournament in particular, I mean, the standout player, you know, obviously Paulino is, uh, you know, a textbook pivot. We saw that turn he made and blasted up high to give them the 2-0 lead. Uh, Benfica's 26-year-old star, Chishkala, he has over a decade of top-flight yeah. experience, and he's only 26 years old. So Chishkala, yeah. obviously one of the best out there in the world right now. And But the real standout has been um and Toshkin. i mean he has five goals in two games a hat trick yeah. in game one almost got it today 
Oh, and he, seem, he seems to be Johnny on the spot. He always yeah. finds himself in the right place at the right time. And the, the way that Russia is playing right now, I mean, they're so exceptionally difficult to penetrate, and they're very sound yeah. defensively. I mean, after two games, they're 11-1 in one in terms of goal difference. Imagine, you know, only allowing one goal in two games so far. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I mean, they should beat Poland pretty soundly next game. I mean, Poland and Russia, it's a very different level. Um, let me ask you, did you have any experience uh, in the past coaching, playing against Russia? And if so, what was it like then? And what do you see now uh, that's the same? And what may have uh, evolved over the years? Yeah, the last thing, uh, go back when we were together in Colombia in the final. Uh, I tell you honestly, when the final takes two minutes longer or three minutes, Russia want to go back in that game, Argentina, you know? They came back uh, with the penalty goal. and uh, But now, uh, later on, they had Cirillo and Pula. Two, oh, two fantastic players. players. Yeah, and that was the style, what they're playing now. But it is now ch it is changing now. It, they also recognize that they must change. It go faster to sides. It go faster inside. Uh, when you see how they're coming uh, from the back, uh, in the front of the defender, etc. They're looking always now, now. And what I what I say, what we say, Ned, uh, the the sh the sh the shooting, the power, what they have from the second row, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's this ball, eh? and uh, that's for me different because I play with the other ball. This ball are much heavier. But what they're doing now also is that the the turning, the turning. Uh, I saw that was the which goal was that? Okay, but. When you see how, how they know each other in the walking lines, and uh, when you could looking not the, in the face from the other one, but in the back, uh, they know exactly there is some, somebody else to coming, and that's fantastic to see. Uh, this, I think in the more than futsal, what they see now, the coach did a great job. He he, he changed Pula, he changed Cirillo, um, he changed other players uh, in another way now, and okay, the potential. And what I also thinking is, uh, they still play two times twenty five minutes in Russia in the league. I was just about Thank to you. ask you, do you think when they changed that rule, it was because of the economic problems uh, from years ago? Yeah. And so I think it was two or three teams that retracted from the Russian league, and people were saying, "How do we get more value for travel? We're the largest geographic country in yeah. the world. Let's make it valuable." Yeah. And 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 my thought, and I'd like your opinion on this, that the extra ten minutes of game time sharpens the players but also gives more minutes to some of the bench players that may not have been able to play in a typical yeah, yeah. two 20 minute halves do yeah. you think that the two 25 minute halves should now be implemented worldwide in futsal because i yeah, love to see I, it happen yeah but i know fifa is against i know fifa is against they they were already fighting in the beginning and i said i i for me it was a marvelous thing i we living here in a small country uh chris in uh, here in holland but when you go from the south to the north and you must travel three hours up for the game for two times 20 minutes and three hours in the night back, nobody does that. But when you go for two times 25, it's already almost uh, almost two hours with, with the, uh, the halftime in that you're looking to a game. And when you and that was one of the reasons also why they did that. And I see the 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 extra what you got from the two times five minutes more, what you said, uh, players coming more to play, eh? the, you can change more, they got more minutes, but the other players also, they got more minutes in the body. Eh? This is when you have, uh, it is not possible anymore when Kiki was playing in Spain in my time. I met my him. Favorite, my in, favorite defender of all time. I absolutely yeah, love him. I met him. I met him in the under 21 with Spain. I was coach with Holland and I saw the wreck. I said that there's a marvelous player. He played how many times the whole game? This is not possible anymore. But when you go to the Russian league, where we're talking about now, I think this player, and we must wait now what happens now, I think they have more power and physical power than other teams. And that's also what I'm seeing in this. And then, the, 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 and then the, 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 of course, I don't know exactly the trainings moment, what the coach are doing. But I see directly now that they're not playing anymore like with Pula or Cirillo. Play in front, up, 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 and go and shooting. That's, 
That's over. That's over. I I was surprised when I saw Russia now because I was in Asia two years now. I didn't. I was not in the Lithuania, and I see now how they're playing. Now they make a big change, and very attractive to see. Very attractive. And the other thing, yeah, okay, yeah, maybe we come later to that. Maybe we come later. Yeah. There's, I think, one of the favorites for me now. What I see in the in this European Championship. I, I mean, for me, I had Russia to win this tournament beforehand. And that was based okay. off what I saw at the World Cup. And then when I saw their rosters, um, there wasn't too many negative effects from injuries or COVID uh, like some of the other teams. I mean, Italy was decimated. Uh, you know, Portugal had some issues. I mean, there's some teams that really, really suffered. I mean, the Ukraine was playing with eight players, I think, the other game. Um, yeah. And it was just, you know, this COVID thing has been terrible for so many reasons, but it's also taken away from this tournament. Um, and, and ultimately, I mean, just what I've seen from Russia so far, I can't imagine another final other than Portugal and Russia at this point. I mean, Spain, Kazakhstan, they can beat anybody any day of the week. Um, but I, I just see Russia and Portugal just a little bit uh, ahead of both of them at this current time. I don't know if you agree or disagree, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, I, when we go further, yeah, I saw Portugal. Huh? I, think, uh, I think in Portugal, uh, I don't know. I have my feeling. I uh, I don't know. I'm 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 still thinking uh, that Spain will come come again. I think yeah. When we go guesting now, because you see, Kazakhstan was uh, the last game playing Italy. Kazakhstan, Italy. There's one of them is out. Italy, and and Slovenia, Finland. There's also one of them. I, I don't know what happens, but for me, it will be uh, uh, yeah. Portugal, Kazakhstan, Russia, and Spain. I think this is the last four, and uh, but I have some surprises also. What I saw, I'm I'm I was very surprised from Finland. What I saw the other days, uh, but okay. When you see Portugal, uh, when is Portugal the most dangerous? When they play with a pivot, uh, when they play with uh, uh, in front. Ziki um, uh, Ziki When he's playing, then it's dangerous. It, this moment that he come. In front of the defenders, perfect. I was watching him what he did when I was I was sitting here and I, yeah. Then you coaching and you are looking. How is it possible that in my time when when you are playing as as pivot in the team, I was always in front of you. And my coach, my coach, my goalkeeper, he said only left, right, left, right. I know exactly where you are. And sometimes you can make a trap that they play today and then you go jump in and you're gone. Here is the same. He, I think Portugal is only very, very dangerous to play when he's in, for, in, the, in the team in front. And that's, it's, in my opinion, it's not enough. But the mentality is okay. Yeah? The mentality of Portugal is perfect. But I think, I think it is, this tournament, I will see. Let me guess. Let me guess each other, and when I see you, you get I give you a bottle of wine when you are right. <laughs> but I, I think I think Spain and and I don't know how is the uh, it will be on the end. And when I see Holland, example, Portugal is number one. I think Holland will qualify Friday against Serbia. It will be me a surprise when Ukraine takes some points against Portugal. I don't think. Is I think Holland Serbia will, will be a draw or Holland. And then Holland play, but then they must get against Group B, and that will be Kazakhstan or the number. Yeah, who's uh, Kazakhstan is number one, and then we got Spain and the group is Russia. Does they come not to each other? Just I think it will be this four uh, coming to the last four. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with that top four at all. I mean, you know, yeah. Slovenia has kind of surprised me a little bit with their performance. You talked yeah. about a team like Finland where Miko Martic has done a good friend of both of ours has done a, a great job in bringing the yeah. Finnish team up. The Finnish Federation is starting to notice these results and saying, Hey, yeah. you know what? Maybe we need to invest more in this. And we're seeing yeah. a lot of marketing. We're seeing a lot of heart. We're seeing yeah. a lot of good things coming up from yeah. Finland. And, and I'm hoping my native Canada can follow suit from another Northern climate country like Finland and start investing in the game. But my surprise has been Slovenia. I think they're going to be a really, really tough, team to deal with um yeah. and ultimately if really you know they have that heart they play for each other uh and i think that's also portugal's biggest asset 
I don't think yeah. talent for talent wise, they match up with Spain or Russia, but their ability to come together under George Barrage has been nothing short of uh, extraordinary. I mean, no. you got the four time consecutive coach of the year, current European and world championship coach. Yeah. I mean, Portugal's confidence is at an all time high and it will be very unlikely that, um, mm -hmm. you know, this, this kind of history can be repeated. Like we used to see with Spain winning, you know, multiple championships back to back Brazil. So it, it was now you're starting to see the quality of futsal rise in certain countries out there. Do you believe that the sport is getting better in some of the other regions now? Do you think that the game is improving? Um, no, that is that is my fight. I, I know when I started 20 years ago as coach and we had seminars, I'm always thinking about the quality in every country. Uh, when we have a good league, uh, and I'll be, be honest, we, in UEFA we have a very good man. Uh, in my opinion, Laura Morel did a lot of good things for futsal. Fantastic uh, guy. One of the yeah. best workers in the entire sport no. out there, Laura Morel. And, and this is the only one, I think, when we go to um, uh, Africa to CAF, uh, when I go to CONCACAF or something, when I go to Asia or I go to uh, uh, the other parts, we need more of this. I, I think I think in Europe is a very nice competition. Uh, that's all. But it is always the same. We have Spain, Portugal, we have Italy, we have Russia, uh, Kazakhstan now. Eh? Well, Kazakhstan is normally in Asia, but they, they jump into UEFA for the better games. You see what happens now. But before they were in Asia. And uh, okay, uh, but then Finland, like example, Miko, he did a great job. He, uh, let me be honest, Finland is growing last year, uh, fantastic. Now, but still, the other countries must also come in. Uh, like uh, I was with FIFA three times in Germany, to uh, uh, already in uh, with Victor Becerro, with the first man in futsal in FIFA. We went already to Frankfurt. Uh, I was in Fulda, I was there, fighting with the coaches. And the, the big man technical director was uh, Matthias Sama. And uh, we're sitting there, how important futsal can be for the development of the futsal football players. That was my message there. But, oh, there was a fight. But now they're coming. And let me be honest, Germany has also potential. Uh, but when the federation not put money and good games and then make the league better, now they have the league for the, the first time national. Okay, but I went to Switzerland. I was uh, one month ago, I was in Switzerland and Austria. Austria has now also a league, but still they believe only that futsal can be played in winter. In Switzerland, you have a competition on the, uh, uh, they start in December and they finish in March. Yeah, how you can play. Uh, Malta is nothing. Because we have too much countries. Um, they are not developed enough. And that's something what I said also in the last interview. I, I think when we want to grow with futsal worldwide, not uh, not in the UEFA, I say honestly, Laurent did a great job. But when we want to change worldwide, uh, FIFA must give the push. FIFA must give, uh, like what they did with the women's football, that every country, uh, they receive the money and 15% from that money goes to the development of women's football. I think when FIFA do this for futsal, the, for the sport will explode. And that is something, but I have the feeling that they don't want. Uh, my last seminar in FIFA was uh, uh, maybe uh, 14, 12 till 14 years ago. And normally we came every year together with the, with the coaches in FIFA for development of the game, but it stopped on one of reasons. We have the grassroots, you know, the grassroots program. And when, you're looking, and when you're looking to the grassroots program is one of the lines is... Uh, uh, look to the futsal department how you can do it small side games. No, we have our own sport. That's our futsal game. Because I think, I think that uh, that we need a lot more countries to come in the Olympic. I'm, I'm fighting also for Olympic already 20 years. I stopped with that because uh, Olympic in the summer was not possible. It was too much football. I said, put it then in winter. Futsal is indoor. Put it in winter. No, why? because in Africa, we have not enough countries to play. We have in the other part of the world, in Asia, it's not enough to play on the Olympics. But when we go to hockey here, we have 10 countries of the world who play hockey, but they are on the Olympic Games. You know what I mean? There's a lot of sports on the Olympic Games. They're also not developed over the whole world. Until us, they say, no, it is not enough. 
uh, we need more countries to play futsal. No, they play futsal for sure, but maybe not on the level uh, what I want personally. But for Olympic Games, we don't need that. I say this is only that that I'm feeling. And a lot of uh, associations are afraid that futsal will be of taking the number one. And that was also what I said in Asia. Thailand can win the World Championships futsal, but not the World Championship football. No, it's not possible. Futsal they can. And that's we, something, okay. But that's the fight what we have already uh, for 20, 30 years. Yeah, uh, uh, it, you, made, you made a couple of good points. I don't want to cut you off. The German potential was huge. I mean, I, I sat down uh, with a few people over at the World Cup in Lithuania, and one of the things mm -hmm. that came out was that the Deutsche Fußballbund, so the German Federation, uh, along with the Bundesliga of futsal that just started this year, has yeah. nine employees dedicated to futsal now. And yeah. imagine that kind of investment out there you show me one other federation with maybe the exception of spain or brazil uh that have nine full-time people dedicated to just futsal maybe russia italy yeah. i don't i'm not sure portugal i'm not sure but yeah. nine in your first year germany yeah. when they want to get something done they make yeah. sure they get yeah. it done so that investment was there but the olympic point that you made i've been saying for a decade this needs to be in the winter games why nobody wants to host these games anymore Futsal is predominantly played during the winter time as well. And also, you know, you're not including countries from warmer climates in the Winter Olympics. You have bobsled, ice hockey, figure skating, no. all these things out there. And the reality of the situation is that if you bring in stuff like, you know, futsal and maybe indoor volleyball, leave the beach volleyball, leave the beach football to the summer games, yeah. you're going to have higher revenues from TV. And let's be honest, that's what the IOC wants, more money. Yeah. That's how it yeah. is. I mean, it's the business of sports. FIFA is doing yeah. the same thing with the World Cup of Football proposal every two years. Personally, yeah. I mean, I want to see more futsal. I want to see more football. But if futsal is at the Winter Games, it will be one of the most watched sports, yeah. hands down, in the first or second Olympics. I guarantee it would be one of the top two watched sports worldwide if it's in the Winter Games. If it's in yeah. the Summer Games... It gets lost completely in the shuffle. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct, and that is something. What I'm, uh, what I, I be honest. There's also something on my age. Slowly, you're thinking, why, why, why I'm fighting so much. I had, a, I, I told you when I left, the, the, one of the biggest. I be honest, one of the biggest uh, associations in the world. That was the KMVB. <coughs> in 1989, we are number second of the world futsal. And what they did, and I can send it also to you, in 92, they bring a CD for the development of small side games for football. But the man who did that was the coach from Futsal, but he was also the man for football. They used the Futsal tools for the development of football in all regions in the country here in Holland. And I was fighting for Futsal, and they used our Futsal game for the developing outdoor and they make four courts on the football pitch and they start small side games. And I was very angry. Then that was for me also one of the things that they don't want. And uh, still now, and now after 30 years, and that's that's also something, we are now living in 22 for the this uh, European Championships. In 89 was the World Championships in Holland. That means 33 years ago, we had... Uh, 33 years we had uh, uh, this tour, uh, a tournament. And when I left Holland, and I, that was an interview for me, I told them, you come never again with this development, what we did in Holland on the World European Championships, even not on the World Championships. Why? We have, no, we have no, no league, we have nothing, we have only amateur league. And I said, when you want to come to the European Championships, the only way what you can do is organize. And you see, you organize now, and when you come to the next round, everybody is happy. But what happens after this tournament? Yeah? During this tournament, I want to do a seminar. And uh, you know, Stephen from Futsal Focus. Yeah, that was actually uh, we were on scooters together in Kaunas the day after the finals. So <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. We, had a, we had a lot okay. of fun together. We said we said to each other, and maybe for you also, uh, for sure, he will invite you also. And he said, shall we do an international a, a seminar during the European Championships? I started talking with the Dutch Federation. I did a draw there with uh, 
for the for this uh, European Championships. I talked to the marketing development what we want. I had already a big sponsor uh, who, after this tournament, maybe can talk to the people from the television how we can set up the the league, etc. And the marketing uh, department, they said, "I call you back." Till now, nobody call uh, nobody calls back. The cost nothing for them. The only thing what we need was a room, and we invited people from uh, international, from the league, from Holland, buy a game, and we make a seminar. How we can go on after this? What you did in Spain, Lozano, come, tell me what you did in Spain. Uh, what we doing there? And but on this moment, nothing. You hear nothing, and that's that's a shame. Just on this. I said the only thing to come on the European Championships is when you organize, and maybe you come one time there because now we if I go from 12 to 16 countries, maybe in the future we go to 24 and you are number 20, and that's it. Same as World Championships football, we have uh, 34 teams, yeah, only eight playing for the trophy. The other is only for the money. Yeah, that's that's the that's the market. But okay. We will see what happens after this, yeah. But still well, fighting the four. But on the end, you say, yeah, you need people. I think we need an own. Yeah, I can say not say everything, but before we had other organizations uh, who had uh, arranged also the futsal in the world, and uh, okay, that was maybe the the way to go then. But now we we uh, in under the umbrella of FIFA, thus you can do nothing. Yeah, and it's there has to be investment from the football side of things because we know that in many countries there are futsal players that register at futsal clubs and play in futsal leagues, but they pay into football uh, regions and football associations where some of them don't even see a penny from the futsal registrations. So how are you going to take from Peter Football to pay for uh, Paul Futsal? You know, uh, you have to reinvest the money that's coming back from the futsal people. Otherwise, you had a situation like you had in Australia. I mean, we see what happened in England when they pulled yeah. the national team out there and they blamed it due to COVID cuts. I don't yeah. buy that for a second. And everybody yeah. in England, you know, who was taping the courts at six in the morning, uh, you know, washing the, the kits of the children, the parents driving the kids to play games, the national team players making sacrifices because they weren't getting full-time salaries playing futsal. And then to have that pulled where you don't even have the opportunity to qualify for the European Championships with the money and the influence that the English FA has, uh, to me, it was absolutely uh, disgraceful. Uh, and I, yeah. I make no apologies for it. So, you know, certain countries have picked it up. You know, we talked about Finland. The, the, my yeah. favorite in the world right now, to be honest, is Morocco. We yeah. saw the investment oh, yeah. that they've made and yeah. the performance that they had at the World Cup. It shows exactly. Morocco means business. Yeah, and correct. all the other African countries, Algeria especially, Egypt, all of these other ones, they're going to start to say, okay, you know what? We don't want to finish you know, second class to Morocco. We need to invest more. And it's going to be a yeah. challenge and a competition out there. So you know, I want to see more of that happen. Um, now, let me ask you, you know, you talked about the Dutch being number two in the world at one point in futsal, uh, and then kind of, you know, falling down and now rebuilding again. Hosting this tournament, the marketing from the KNVB and UEFA has been top class. I mean, some of the best I've ever seen in futsal, and I love it. And now fans will be able to watch games, 1,250 fans at each arena. It's better than zero. It's not going to be full, but we at least have a few Dutch fans who are going to be able to add some atmosphere to these games. What does it mean, as the Dutch legend that you are, for the Netherlands to host this European Futsal Championship? Yeah, I, I, I think you, what it means for me is uh, uh, I'm happy that they organize. I'm happy. Uh, and I, I also happy that they give the attention to. The only thing what I'm curious is what happens after this. Look, this costs a lot of money to bring, to bring that. You can also say we don't organize. And we saved the money and we put it directly in the development of futsal. That was the other, that was the other case for me. Now this costs a lot of money also, but what is after this tournament? This is the most important. And when you said before something about these players play also football, eh? this Holland is also one of the countries that the futsal players play, play also football. 
Uh, and I, I know what you said about the registration money. In Holland, when you be a football player, you play registration money, but also the futsal club play registration money to the Dutch FA. Because they got two times the money also from football and football together. I think there must come a plan, a real plan uh, after this. When these players are not professional. You be, uh, and that's that what I want to reach with that seminar, to make a semi-professional competition and then start slow by bit to bring it to a higher level. And yeah, uh, for me, as uh, for me, as, as personally as Dutch, I'm very happy. I hope that I qualified against Serbia. But the most important for me is what happens after this. And I don't know. I don't know. On this moment, I have not the best feeling that we're going to start with this tournament as the start for something new. But there is nothing changed. There is nothing changed. After when I forbid in 2009 that the players can play football, after the next coach, the, the next coach after me, he took everything away and he said, OK, you can play football again, what you want. You come only one time to, uh, to the national association when we have international games. That's it. Yeah, that's it. When you, when you have a development program like that, you never can win. Max now, then this coach, he has a lot of good games. He played Portugal, he played Argentina. He just, the peak to this tournament was perfect. Oh, they came also to me in the Malta two years ago with this team. Uh, they play with me. And, uh, but okay, you saw that they're growing. In the, but now, now after this, that's, that's the next step. And you see also in the, this team, what I see, the, the players who play like Jamal Al Janouti, I select him in the beginning. Uh, he's 38 years old. So this, this is a lot tournament. Then we have other couple of players. Is there something what we can? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I hope. I hope that the KMVB uh, after this tournament sit together and say, okay, we saw what we need for to compete with other countries in Europe, and that's more money for development. Uh, we need our own futsal department. Uh, uh, that was also my fight. Uh, I tell you the other story. Uh, the futsal department. We have six big sponsors in Holland football but these six sponsors are also the sponsor from the futsal and i told the federation what are you doing we have another floor i can find sponsors for the floor we have another ball we have other goals we can our marketing can go other direction no 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 it's not possible because we have a contract with uh uh, uh what are the roof is there uh, audi uh, we Audi, we have uh, other count this one, this one. No, I say, but they don't come to the futsal games. They come only when Holland play against Germany football. I say we have other things what we can find. It was not possible. It was not possible. Well, it, 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 it's that- true. It's it's every federation that does it, not to cut you off, but Spain. They're with Joma in futsal. They're with yeah. Adidas in football. There's I know- no reason why it can't be done. I know the price from, I'll be honest, I know the price what they get from the Yoma. I know. And that's why I said with, when I speak with Gavier uh, together and uh, talking about some things, how we can develop. Uh, now, of course, this is one of the things. Uh, and uh, I have the on my computer here, I have also the prices of the, the floor. It's different than in a football stadium by Ajax. And that's uh, something what they don't want in the association. That is in the KMVB. And I hope that the KMVB say, okay, we must look how we can support the futsal in their own way to develop. I made, like in Brazil, I was there in the opening for the sports facilities in uh, Brazil when they had started their own academy for futsal. <coughs> we can do that also in Holland, but they don't want. And that's the fight. That's the fight. And I had the fight for 10 years. And after 10 years, I said, it's not possible. But the Dutch Federation is, is so good, but the only thing they must support the sport himself. And that's something uh, for me, it's not enough. That's not enough. Yeah, there has to be more, but I love the fact that they're hosting this tournament, getting in touch with the history and putting uh, a very, very beautiful marketing program together. The court is the best futsal court I think I've ever seen. I absolutely love it. Um, with only two minutes left, we got to talk quickly about Group D's match day two. Who do you have between Georgia versus Bosnia and then yeah. Spain versus Azerbaijan? Yeah, yeah, Spain is true. 
But I mentioned here, I, I said here the question by Georgia. Why? I was uh, two, two, three times I played with my Malta team in Georgia, and I saw now the first game also from them. I was surprised. I was, and also Georgia is a winning team. It's a very strong winning team. They're not. They fight for everything. As I say, there's a big question mark that I'm thinking that Georgia can be a surprise in that group. And the other, the other, uh, Chris, the other very short, the other, when I played Yugoslavia before 1990, now we have so many countries there, Bosnia, etc. Go on, the, uh, Bosnia, Croatia, they have all good teams. They have all good teams. Just football is also there in that group, is also. But my, I think, I, I put it here down this evening when I was looking to the groups again. Yeah, Spain is number one, but the, for me, it will be Georgia. They make a big chance, but we will see tomorrow. It's tomorrow at the games. Yes. Yep. It'll be it's going to be tomorrow at two thirty. Sorry, five thirty Dutch time 5:30. and eight thirty is the second. And yes. uh, Spain versus Azerbaijan. Pretty clear that Spain are favorites. Yeah. You happen to agree? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, but but uh, I said in the beginning to each other that you see the countries who were coming with the last four. I think, and we will see what happens. But. Till now, I saw some very good games. And the other topic what we did not mention is also that more countries, and you saw that, start playing with the goalkeeper in the development. All countries come, is coming, and it will be it will be more and more for sure. Uh, when you see Kazakhstan, of course, that was number one in Asia, and then in Europe who play with the goalkeeper. But you, today I saw already, and they did not play it very well, uh, but also the, the goalkeeper from... Uh, Slovakia was every time in the kick-ins, he was every time there. But also this is something what uh, to analyze as coach, of course. Yeah, but okay, we will see. Well, I love it. Well, you know what? What is left for you in your career to accomplish? What do you got next? You, you've you been around the world. You've been to three World Cups. I mean, it's, you know, you, you got a great resume, FIFA instructor. You've been in Asia, Europe. I mean, you've done courses all around the world. What what's left for you? Uh, my last left is uh, my last last. Uh, I left. I left. Uh, my dream is now that I can set up in Philippines a very nice team, uh, and I make the choice in my life not to uh, uh, start and and going with a manager and uh, coach only top teams. I make only the always the solution to take teams where you can work and you must put something on the on the line and to develop. And that was that's what for me. I had the opportunity sometimes that somebody called me, can I put you there? No, that's not. I want to follow my own heart. Because now I'm hoping that I can set up in Philippines a nice ladies' team, a nice uh, men's team. I'm already working with nine people there in the regions. There's the talents coming now slowly, bit by bit, to me. And then I hope to fix uh, with the coaches that we come to the AFC championships. That's my target. And uh, oh, and then we will see. And then we see. But I, I miss only uh, the tournament, the last tournament. The other tournaments, I was, I was there as TSG by FIFA as coach. Uh, but I, what I said in the beginning, you, yeah, I have the feeling that come young people and uh, respect in futsal, Chris is also uh, don't don't expect that. That is not in. I see it here also. Uh, you can do the draw, and uh, when you want to have a ticket for the games, you must fight and asking, can I please have a ticket for the game? And when you go to the KMVB and you come inside, you have the Wall of Fame. You see Johan Cruyff, you see everybody, Barricam from Percy, and you see Fake Hermans also between that people. And now for the European Championships, nobody asks anymore for, uh, hey, Fake, are you coming for the game or you can do something for us? That's football. It's a very strange world. <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better myself, my friend. Yeah. And. Yeah. You know what? There's episode six of Inside Futsal with Dutch legend Vic Hermans, the international man of futsal. Vic, hopefully come on a future show out there. I had a fantastic time getting all that insight out there and some of the okay. stories you shared. I think people are just going to absolutely love it, my friend. Sound okay. good? Okay. Thank you. And when you need me, you can call me. I love it. I'll always make sure we got time for you, Vic. Vic okay. Hermans, legend Thank you. of Dutch futsal, FIFA instructor. He's been everywhere. Thanks again. Okay. And we'll see Thank you tomorrow you. for episode seven. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.